David versus Goliath. Pick every other sporting or real life comparison you want to make. It applies tonight. Great crossing boys, 30 and one. Number one in the state. Number 20 in the nation. Two time defending 41st district champions. Western Hills just won their eighth game of the season the other night at the buzzer against Franklin County to reach the 41st district final. It's a rematch of a triple overtime classic from last year. Can the Wolverines throw a scare into the Warhawks? Or will the home team soar to another title? We'll find out shortly here on Cable 10. at a packed gym at Great Crossing High School in Georgetown for the final game of this 41st District Tournament. It's the Boys Championship, and it pits the number one team in the state. You look at that score from the other night and know it's not a typo or a misprint. 106-22 over Frankfurt. The Wednesday night game, substantially better and more entertaining. Western Hills on a hook shot by Javion Campbell at the buzzer win a back and forth affair with Franklin County, avenging not one, not two, but three regular season losses by double digits. And here they are, they've got a chance to shock the world. I'm Cal Oaks with Jason Hyatt. And Jason, obviously we're seeing a great crossing team. You said it the other night, it's a brand of basketball that I'm not sure any of us have seen at the high school level. And they are uh, ready to make another statement as they look toward finishing the 11th region. They've gotten to the semifinals once, then twice. They haven't gotten to the final, they haven't won it. This is the team they think is going to do that finally for this fifth year team, this fifth year school. Yeah, it's a group of five guys really that have been together for years and years and the dividends are starting to pay off really. Um, it's, it, it's high flying, it, they get it done on all levels of the court and uh, it should be a tall order for this Western Hills team tonight. But, you know, you said it's not a typo on that great crossing score. It's not a typo on that Franklin County Western Hills score right. either. Western Hills came in and they just outmanned, out hustled and outplayed Franklin County until the very end when, like you said, we got the buzzer beater shot from that man right there, JV on Campbell to send Western Hills shockingly into this district championship game. He is a load. He is a special athlete. A dozen high Division I football scholarship offers after his junior season. But on the basketball court, he was part of that triple overtime classic last year with brother Walter. Now it's his team. It's been a team racked by injuries throughout the year. I was having a conversation on social media with Coach Jeff Cody the other night, who's done a fantastic job with that program, by the way. And he said, look, we've dro drilled in our kids' heads. We don't care if we go 0-30 in the regular season. It is all about getting ready for that district semifinal. And boy, they took that message to heart. Yeah, the preparation showed off. And it was just a really impressive win. And it sets up a, a matchup that I think Western Hills actually brings something to this game against Great Crossing that maybe Franklin County wouldn't have of the size and of JV on Campbell. Because for Great Crossing, they've got the height, particularly in Michael Marino and Jeremiah Godfrey. Uh, uh, not to mention, you know, Vince Dawson. I mean, he's got height that Western Hills can't compete with. But JV on brings a size that I don't know that Great Crossing has in terms of just strength and lower body. The question is, is his size alone enough 
because Great Crossing is just going to keep coming at them from all different angles. Great Crossing with the seven foot one Malachi Marino, the six foot seven Jeremiah Godfrey, the six foot six Vince Dawson the third, and the six foot four Gage Richardson across the board, as you said. And then you throw in the point guard, Janias Burrell, a four year starter. It is a veteran group, it's a savvy group, it's a group that has taken on all comers in the state and throughout this part of the country on its way to a 30-1 and record in a national ranking. Javion Campbell, they're probably gonna throw a lot of things at him and challenge other Wolverines to beat them. We've seen other guys step up in the Franklin County game at times. Austin Stone had a stretch, Cole McDonald had a stretch. They're going to each have to do that and then some tonight for Western Hills to have a shot. Yeah, this. and that was the strategy that Franklin County took a couple of nights ago. They really limited Campbell. I think he only had six points in the first half. They forced other people to beat them, and to Western Hills' credit, they did. Cole McDonald really stepped up in the first half and kept them afloat uh, to where it was a – I can't remember the exact score, but it was close, you know, a couple points one way or the other. And so it was like, look, you get in the second half, now it's a ball game. And then Javion Campbell came out, and Coach Cody, it was obvious, said, get this man the ball, and he absolutely took over the entire second half. Franklin County had a 31-28 to lead at the half, and Cole McDonald had 12 of those to, to put into perspective how dominant he was. As the lights go down, and we introduce the starting lineups. What we're hoping will be a fun one. It's going to be a fun one for somebody that's going to be cutting down the nets and hoisting the trophy at the end of this one. Austin Stone, the senior guard, being introduced. Number three, the man of the hour the other night, Javion Campbell. He took the ball to the rim like a truck in the third quarter, and then when they needed it most with three seconds left, set up a play to get him a hook shot so he could call game. Noah Morris. Cameron Flynn and Cole McDonald round out the starting lineup. For the Western Hills Wolverines, who come in with eight wins, but regardless of how this ends, they're going to the 11th region tournament once again. That's right. That's why that uh, semifinal matchup so critical because it not only gets you to this game, it gets you your berth into the regional tournament. We mentioned that starting five of Dawson, Burrell, Godfrey, Richardson, and Marino. Marino averages a 16.13 rebound double-double. He has four career triple-doubles. At least one of those was against Western Hills. Western Hills has never beaten Great Crossing, but in addition to that triple overtime game, they had a Vince Dawson buzzer beater a couple of years back. So they have been a thorn in the flesh, so to speak, for Great Crossing. If that's at all in Great Crossing's mind remains to be seen as they have not seemed to be bothered by much this year or by anybody. They've had a ton of close games against good competition, sometimes even falling behind by a substantial margin before putting it together in the second half. As you see Malachi Marino, the 7-1, he's a target of Kentucky, Indiana, Purdue, Notre Dame, Auburn, Tennessee, the list goes on, some two dozen Division I offers for number 24. And you see there in uh, front of your screen, number 11, Gage Richardson. He's the one guy really the other night against Frankfurt that never got anything going. We know he can light it up. We've seen it throughout the years. He's got the shot, but you know, maybe it was just, hey, I'll let the other guys shine tonight, but I'll be interested to see if he can get things going from outside. A lot of guys in street clothes on that Western Hills bench. That could be a factor as they've got to stay out of foul trouble and they've got to keep their legs under them against what promises to be a wave of offensive fireworks from Great Crossing as Vince Dawson the third shows you what I mean with a three-pointer out of the game. Starts things off exactly the way he did against Frankfurt High on Tuesday night, three-pointer from the right uh, corner. Ended up with 26 in the first half, 30 overall in that one. Hook shot by Campbell, trying to start this one the way he finished the other night. He gets the put back there to make it 3-2. And he shows you the strength that he has down low, not afraid of Marino's height, just goes right into him. Burrell directing traffic. 
He has Dawson on the wing. Moreno setting a screen. Burrell pounds it into him. Moreno, hook shot, no good. Gets his own miss. Rolls it around and in. And we'll see. two for three. Yeah, we'll see how this goes throughout the game. So far, the first couple possessions, refs letting them play. I, you know, I think you could have called a foul on both ends, Marino and uh, Javion Campbell guarding each other. Let's let them play through it. Uh, I think we're all happy with that for the time being. Western Hills throws it away. I'd call it an unforced error, but it was the long arms of Jeremiah Godfrey that inspired it. Richardson inbounds to Moreno. Easy layup. Out of bounds underplays are almost automatic for this team, and you can imagine why. Now the pressure comes in the backcourt. You make shots, you can put that pressure on. They will trap Stone. He will get it to McDonald. It's blocked by Godfrey from behind. And that's one where McDonald's going to need to understand that there's other guys coming up behind him. Keep going in towards the basket. Shoot the floater. If you just pull up, that gives those long arms a chance to catch up to you. Morris looking for help. He finds Campbell. Moreno on him. Off the glass, no good. Dawson gets a running start with the rebound. Gets it taken away. Now it's on the floor. Richardson will give chase and pick it up and retain the possession for great crossing. Up ahead to Burrell. Burrell the drive. Fouled on his way to the rim. He will have two. I think Burrell had his option there of either taking it himself or throwing the lob to Godfrey. Opted to try it himself and draws the foul from behind. Godfrey, Godfrey says, that was mine, man. I had it. I was going to put on a show. Nope. Get his chance before the game's over, I'm sure. Burrell rattles home the free throw, 8 to 2. Not just past 90 seconds in this one. 6.25 to play. First quarter. A great crossing. I think they had 10 points in 30 seconds the other night. So, so that, uh, Western Hills has slowed them down, if nothing else. They slowed the pace dramatically here. Up ahead, they break the pressure. Moreno kicks it as McDonald was trying to work it in to Campbell. Here's Cole McDonald, 12 first quarter, first half points the other night, rather, to keep his team in it until they could have a JV on Campbell takeover. Here's Campbell, strength against strength. He goes over Marino and puts it up and in. And showing he can go to the left hand. So gets the defender on his hip, spins the other way. Dawson open three, left side, no good. Marino comes in, loses the handle, can't get both hands on the rebound, and it will come down to Flint. Now Stone pushing. The tempo, Flynn stops inside the arc, good. 9-6, your score. Both teams hot early from the floor. Inside for Western Hills, now they hit from outside. For a team with only eight wins on the season, they don't look scared, or not nervous. They're just playing within the flow of the game. Again, that fear factor shouldn't be an issue as they have seen great crossing enough times. It's the same guys they've been watching for oh so long, it's just uh, they they get stronger year upon year as Moreno draws the foul. Yeah, He's been gonna... playing key varsity minutes since eighth grade, now a junior. The foul went on Morris uh, before Campbell came into the picture. Line drive on that free throw, it doesn't go down. Morris, yeah, before Campbell was left in no man's land, committed the foul. Moreno misses both. Rebound Morris. Turns out to be a good foul for Morris. I think any time you can make Moreno earn it from the line, even though he's vastly improved there, that's probably the best play. He blocks that one. And Godfrey's going to lay it in. He, didn't, he left his feet a little too early to get the showtime dunk. The end result's the same, 11-6. And Dawson reaches in. We'll get called for that one against Stone. Yeah, I'm sure Godfrey would have liked a little showtime, but honestly, I think that was a good athletic play because you, you, sometimes you catch it in that rhythm where you're in between steps and you're not sure do you take a dribble, then you get too deep. So nice job of just laying it in at the rim. Looks taking the to two. the rim. Yeah, it's a lob to Campbell over Moreno. Campbell will muscle his way inside, misses, but Morris grabs it, loses it. It goes to GC. Campbell probably should have kicked that one out, had an open teammate for a wide open three. He's got the hot hand. He carried it over from the other night. Four points to start this one out, but no dice there. Richardson, the lob, backdoor to Dawson. 
for the two-handed flush. And Marino was the one setting that screen, sealing off his man, allowed for the alley-oop. Stone dishes to McDonald, tries to spin away from Burrell. Godfrey gets a hand in there. Stone bounces it to Campbell out of control a little bit, picks it back up. Moreno with the swat. Burrell on the run, four on two. Lobs it to Godfrey for that the all, jam. That all started on the other end. Marino being very patient, very disciplined in his defense against Campbell. Not biting for the fakes, knowing he's got the height. He can just stand there, keep his arms up. Flynn throws it off of Richardson to maintain the possession. Midway through this first quarter, a great crossing ahead of its scoring pace the other night. On track for 120 at this point. There is a deflection, and Godfrey to Dawson, maybe a third dunk. No, he'll lay it in. And on top of it, Morris commits a foul he probably shouldn't have, and it will send Dawson to the line. Yeah, that one was not a good foul. It's going to be his second. And it provides an and one opportunity for Dawson. Dawson scores in bunches. He had 26 in the first half the other night. Hit a three to start this one. Three-point play opportunity here goes down. Also had a dunk. That's eight of the 18. 18 to six is your score out of the gate tonight. And you see the versatility from Godfrey out and there Burrell. providing the pressure, yeah. Getting his hand on it. Just hands everywhere. Well, and it, it feels like those hands are all stretched out about six feet on either side of every player. Godfrey's got some wingspan to him. They bounce it inside and off the bench. Higgins in place of Morris goes against Moreno and makes it happen. Richardson for three in response. And if they get him going, it's going to be a runaway. There's a kick in the wrong direction, and Hills will get called for the over and back. Yeah, I like the strategy that Coach Page has of putting Godfrey out on stone. That's just really disrupting the offensive rhythm for Western Hills, making it really hard for them to get into their sets. Look at Coach Jeff Cody, who guided his team to the final a year ago in that game that none of us who were there will ever forget. Trying to spring the shocker tonight, but Gray Crossing so far playing the role of stubborn heavy favorite as Dawson is already in double digits. And that's that mid-range game that we saw the other night. He just does such a good job of being under control, getting high in the air and releasing right at the top of his jump. He is silky smooth from inside the arc and pretty good from outside it. Stone dribbling past Godfrey, wild shot, and Campbell kicks it out of bounds. Nothing to show for it, but I think that's probably the play you got to have. Stone driving in, drawing some defenders. Just put the ball up there and let Campbell go get it. Just wasn't able to corral it that time. Moreno will inbound it. Something holding up the works at the other end. Maybe a blood issue as Flynn looking at his elbow. Burrell walks it across the bird logo. Richardson, you've got to pay attention to him as he's already hit one. The problem is, where do you spend your defensive capital, if you're Hills or if you're anybody? Richardson dumps it into Marino for another easy deuce. Yeah, good cut from Marino. Campbell was slow to slide over and just gave up the inside position. Campbell taking it at Marino. Burrell coming in to help. Knocking it out of bounds. More of those active hands from the Warhawks. I don't know if Campbell even saw that Burrell was coming down from the wing. Austin Stone for a deep three from in front of the great crossing student section. 
Hill's not going away yet. Godfrey trying to slam at the other end. Stone says, uh-uh. Go to the line and do it there. This is a good 23, 24 feet from the basket. Good shot by Austin Stone. Good foul at the other end as Godfrey not great crossing's most efficient free throw shooter. Left that one on the rim. Yeah, that's he's sub 50%. It has been a struggle at times. Do we, we need to establish a Mendoza line for free throw shooting. I'm not is 50% the, the number? I, I think that's that's probably a fair. Uh, honestly, as a team, they were between 50 and 60 for a couple of years as Burrell cashes in off the steal. They have improved that pretty dramatically this year to get more. It's more like two out of three ain't bad in their free throw column. Another deep three. Higgins gets it to bounce in off the back rim, so four off the bench for him. Sometimes you get points where you least expect it. Dawson drives for an uncontested layup after the pass from Richardson. Sometimes you get points from the guy <laughs> you most definitely expected. Uh, floater before he got called for the travel, and McDonald missed it wildly. Moreno outlet to Burrell, pull up three. No, rebound Morris. Well, what Western Hills doesn't want to do is get into a horse race against Great Crossing. They need to slow things down a little bit. Marino with the steal from Campbell. He and Godfrey will play pass. I'm running out of words for some of these dunks, Jason. I did not think he was going to be able to get to that. And even if he could get to it, wasn't going to be able to control it. That, that was impressive. My goodness. And a block at the other end. Tireless. Godfrey, showtime! 31, 33, 13, rather. They had nine dunks at Western Hills during the regular season. That's at least four in the first quarter tonight. And Stone will not get a shot off. Threes are wild in the first quarter. 33 points on the board for Great Crossing and a 20-point lead. More after this. In 1972, a young David Tolles vowed to jump the Kentucky River on his big wheel. He did not make it. We can rebuild him. We have the capability to make the world's perfect mechanic better, stronger, faster. David Tolles Tires and Auto Service on Duncan Road. Kentucky Farm Bureau agents wear a lot of hats. There are coaches, volunteers, church members, neighbors, someone who's there when you need them, especially when you need them most. That may be a lot of hats, but they're all the perfect fit. Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment. Welcome back, Cal Oaks, Jason Hyatt. Jason, what is the high school equivalent of Phi Slamma Jamma? <laughs> because we're seeing it tonight. It's uh, been a quite the display in the first quarter. Western Hills did a good job of slowing things down and hanging around for the first few minutes, but wow, did Great Crossing get it going in the last two or three minutes. It was showtime. Dawson, Godfrey, Marino, Godfrey in that order. Nice drive, missed the shot. Second chance for Higgins. A foul on the attempted swat. Christian Martin in the game will get called for that foul. Jalen Warren has also checked in. Defensive pest for Great Crossing. See Kalen Higgins there, he's just a sophomore. Only averaged two and a half points a game coming into this but already with four and now a trip to the line. He's kind of Javion Campbell light, I think, is the way he's playing right now. Yeah, he's provided good minutes, um, you know, kind of opposite. Obviously, you know, Javion's not gonna come out unless he absolutely has to, but he's been a good sidekick down low for him. Makes one of two.
Dawson, drive, bounces it to Martin. Martin in trouble, kicks it out. There's a miss from L.J. Holman, who has also checked in the game. Freshman for great crossing. Stone picks it up, gets it to Campbell on the outside. McDonald for a three, rattles it home. That's the shooter's touch. Shooter's rolls, shooter's touch, friendly rim. Call it what you will. The answer, attempted answer from Jalen Warren is no good. Don't Higgins. look now, but Western Hills within 16. Yeah, Higgins going up for another rebound. And, you know, I like the courage that McDonald has showed. Here's Flynn, similar shot. No, and Marino on the rebound. But you got to like Western Hills' uh, tenacity and willingness to take that. What a move by Dawson. There's not much you can do about that. Spin cycle. Western Hills um, seems to come out. You can see there, yeah, just Dawson going right to his strong side and nobody there to help. Uh, going back even to the game against Franklin County, Western Hills seems to do really well coming out of timeouts, whether it's half, quarter, just a, a call timeout. Coach Cody gets things kind of lined up, drawn up well for his team, and they respond. The, the question is, can they keep that going? Because they seem to do that for a couple of minutes and then uh, kind of go away from it. But we saw that when he, you know, coming out of halftime the other night, get the ball to JV on Campbell, and they did that really well. And they started the game well. They started the second quarter pretty well. They're just going to keep that going. Had to rectify a clock issue. Not the first time we've said that in this tournament. Now we're back underway. Telegraph that pass. Holman got a hand on it. Now Martin on the run. Lays it up and in. Bank shot from the junior. COVID junior. Four-year veteran. And now the steal by Martin. And the foul by Hills. The Stone Hawks reaches are, in. Are collapsing on Campbell. Every time they go down to him in the post, somebody is coming down from the wing to double team him from front and back, and it's really giving him fits. He was not going to be allowed to beat Great Crossing tonight. It was going to come from alternate sources and probably outside. Because you just can't get the ball inside with any regularity. Moreno gets his own miss. And the stick back dunk. Just staying with it. Campbell played good defense, but you can only deny so many times. Holman playing airtight defense, as he often does, with Dawson coming to help. Western Hills will keep it. Stone will sit down. Preston Klaus, an eighth grader, has checked into the game for Western Hills. And Higgins again delivers. Last night it was McDonald stepping up. Tonight it looks like it's going to be Higgins. Hills just not getting back on defense. A little too much quickness there from Holman. Gets the two back. Warren's going to get called for the reach. The tough thing for the Wolverines is you expend so much energy. You know, you think about you should use your energy on defense. They've got to use so much energy on offense just trying to work the ball up against this great crossing pressure defense that sometimes getting back on an outlet is tough to do. Dawson and Marino sitting down. Burrell and Godfrey and Richardson, the starters on the floor right now, along with Holman and Warren. Holman, the foul there. So three fouls quickly here for the Warhawks in the second quarter. They're up 22. Campbell just swinging, <laughs> trying to get free from that double team and gets called for the offensive foul as Jalen Warren went flying. Well, I think that was even a triple team. As you see, it was. Three He's guys coming right in, there. Warren, Godfrey, and Richardson backing off a little bit to deny any pass out of it. Does the cylinder rule apply in high school <laughs> basketball? 
I don't think many rules apply to this great crossing team. They, uh, they break all the mold. They bounce it into Campbell, but Godfrey was there and Richardson got the steal. Yeah, with Marino on the bench now, Godfrey has slid down to guard Campbell and does a good job there. Coleman step back three is no good. Rebound, McDonald. Catch and shoot three is no good. Godfrey on the board. Klaus took that one. They'll kick it out to Burrell on the left wing for a three that splashes home. Brushed good, off the rim a little bit. Good vision spotting the open man across the court. Burrell got his feet set, knocks it in. Dunks and threes, threes and dunks has been the story of this 25-point lead in the first half. Warren going to get called for the aggressive defense there, so his second in short order. Well, you know, Cal, that's modern basketball. You want basically all your shots to either be at the rim or behind the three-point line, as little as possible in between. Certainly at the higher levels, that is uh, the norm, and this team has the physical abilities to do just that at the high school level. Floater, no good. Martin the rebound. He'll find Richardson, who drives and dishes, and Godfrey will throw it down once again. Richardson sensed the double team coming over for him, just dropped it right in between the two defenders. Godfrey knows what to do with it from there. McDonald against Warren, fade away, no good. Warren gets the rebound. Does Godfrey challenge Campbell? Richardson pull up three. In and out. Rebound Klaus. Western Hills, as you see on the screen, a lengthy drought of two minutes and 20 seconds. And it's going to get longer as Richardson throws it off a of steal to Martin. That's twice we've seen Martin with the left hand, kissing it off he the He is a known weapon with the left hand. That's what he does offensively, win, and, he, and he's sneaky. He doesn't score a lot. Some games he doesn't get on the court, but a night like tonight would show up double digits before it's all over. Timeout on the court, 48-19, your score. Great crossing in command. Game of the Week is brought to you by David Tolls Auto Pro. You're in good hands with David Tolls Auto Pro. Bring your vehicle to us for the best repairs in the Frankfurt area. Two locations at 1348 Versailles Road and 515 Duncan Road. And check us out at davidtollsautopro.com. Game of the Week is brought to you by J.O. Osborne with the Franklin County Farm Bureau. The Franklin County Farm Bureau's J.O. Osborne wishes all of our local teams a healthy, competitive, and successful season. J.O. and Kentucky Farm Bureau have been insuring Frankfurt since 1943. With them on your team, when you experience a loss from an accident or storm, it can be a real game changer. Back at Great Crossing High School, where the home team putting on a show, 48-19, 3.17 to go in the second quarter. Cal Oaks, Jason Hyatt here on Cable 10, bringing you the 41st District Boys Championship. And so far, nothing like the airtight game we saw last year. No, and... You know, the absence of Walter Campbell certainly has a lot to do with that. It's hard to understate what, uh, you know, a presence he was on the court, what he meant to this team. And the, um, <laughs> you can just see, see the difference. After tonight, anything's going to seem like a novice setting for Western Hills when they move on to the 11th region tournament. That's the good news for the Wolverines right now. The good news also, J.B. on Campbell going to the line for a potential three-point play and talking to himself, trying to get fired up here. Well, one thing that we know is that he is never going to quit. Uh, Campbell's going to keep fighting as, as long as he's in the game. Jalen Warren will sit with his third foul. Don't usually see that as he doesn't even start the game for great crossing. But Playing the tight defense that he's known for sometimes in the playoffs, that'll get you rung up. Campbell rattles in the free throw to complete the and one. 
Warhawks can hit or surpass 50 on this possession. Dawson, back of the rim with the three. Here comes Hills. Break through the pressure. Godfrey challenged that three. It was off. And going after the rebound, Richardson along with Flynn will go to the Hawks. And for Western Hills, I will say they are at least getting some shots up. Uh, I, I think they've done a good job of, look, understanding it's going to be difficult when you get any kind of open look, put it up there. Don't just hang around waiting for a, a turnover. So uh, it's not producing a whole lot, but they are at least getting the ball up on the rim. Richardson bounces it into Godfrey. We're going to see another one. Nope, couldn't get that one to fall. Just didn't. Time the jump right. Dawson with the offensive rebound and the wraparound. That's just natural talent and ability from Dawson, understanding how to get that ball up off the glass. 50 to 22, under two minutes to play in the half, and there's a steal. We're going to see another Dawson dunk, maybe. Nope, play in as Hills got back on defense to make him work for it a little bit. It's a 30-point margin. The other night, the entire second half was played with a running clock. We're not there yet. But within five and just over 90 seconds to play. Nice drop off to Campbell for the kind of sort of dunk. 52-24, quickly, great crossing. Back at you. Moreno will slow it down for a minute. Burrell, drive, stop, eight-footer is good. Good defense, better offense. <laughs> McDonald hung with him, forced him to pull up and not get all the way to the rim, but just a silky little jumper from Burrell. Bank shot three for McDonald is off. Moreno throws it to Dawson, Euro step. That's as pretty as a dunk any time. Just a little up and under scoop shot. He can cover so much ground just with that, you know, one or two steps. Knows how to use his body. And the trap, Godfrey kicks it out of bounds, 39.5 seconds. Coach Steve Page has been excited about this group since they started out. Two trips to the 11th region semifinals after the last two district titles. They were a lot of people's favorite to get to Rep Arena and win it this year, but it's a tough region. Campbell, nice move and flips it in around Marino. He's not just all strength, he's got a little craftiness. Richardson, if you give him that much time to set his feet in the corner, he could hit about 20 in a row. And there's the steal and maybe the 35 point margin. Dawson throws it to Godfrey. Slam, jam, bam. 35 point lead and unless Western Hills makes that which they do Richardson will throw it to the other end 61 to 29 is your halftime score we'll collect our thoughts have a few words from the sponsors be back with some halftime entertainment maybe some stats from this one it's all great crossing folks game of the week halftime show is brought to you by classic gold Art carved class rings are available at Classic Gold Master Jewelers on 859 East Main Street in Frankfurt. Classic Gold Master Jewelers, 859 East Main Street. Welcome back to Great Crossing High School, site of the 41st District Tournament. Right now, it looks like it's going to be the site of an 11th Region quarterfinal game on Tuesday night. And the Warhawks will be hosting that one, unless uh, a, a turnaround of epic proportions that uh, we can't even imagine at this point. Western Hills, a game effort, Jason Hyatt, to uh, be where they are, but where they are right now is down 32. Yeah, I mean, you know, what are you going to do? You're, you've run into a buzzsaw, and, I mean, look, you knew coming in you are going to be overmatched, but you keep fighting, and to Western Hills' credit, they've done that. They have 
fought, you know, there's only been, honestly, probably a couple times, if that, that they've just given up the, the long play. But, you know, they're playing hard. What else are you going to do? The dance team bringing you the halftime entertainment. Highlights from the first half, and spoiler alert, a lot of them are dunks. Yeah, the above the rim game was on display in this one, but it, you know, Vince Dawson setting the tone just like he did the other night with the outside shot to get it started, but that just opened things up down low. And uh, great crossing, just stayed with it. Marino JVO and Campbell has been tenacious for Western he, Hills. He has. He's been keeping going. But I think Mar Marino, this has been one of the better games that I've seen him play, um, at least you know, in the 41st district matchups. Um, I I've just been impressed with his ability to play within the game. He's not forcing anything, letting it come to him, but he's really been effective. At both ends. He's getting, he's cleaning up on the boards, and he's blocking shots at the other end. And creating fast breaks such as that one. Gave it up, got it back. Jeremiah Godfrey has put some guys on a poster this year and adds to that trail tonight. I'm sure that it's by design that Godfrey is the one running out on a lot of these, but it just seems like he's got a knack for being out there on the fast breaks to finish with the slams. Right place, right time, more often than not. Christian Martin, don't underestimate his ability to get to the rim. Certainly not going to underestimate Mr. Javion Campbell. Vince Dawson, that was a pretty play among his. Looking forward to seeing his point total on the box score score sheet. Yeah, it's kind of wild that Great Crossing has a 32 point lead, and Vince Dawson is kind of a few people down the list of guys to talk about because it. it, it a little bit quiet just in terms of what you would expect out of Dawson, but still an explosive game. He had a bunch early and then distributed to his teammates quite a bit for that nice play at the end of the half. We'll let our sponsors tell you about all the people that bring this action to you during the year, and then we'll be back with second half action here on Cable 10. Thanks for joining us for this one, everybody. Game of the Week is brought to you by Tim and Rebecca Hubbard with Exit Realty Crutcher. Choose local realtors that treat you like family because real estate is what we do and families are why we do it. In today's fast-paced housing market, you need realtors with experience who understand that timing is essential when finding the perfect home for the right price. Tim and Rebecca Hubbard with Exit Realty Crutcher are here to ensure that you and your family have a positive experience from start to finish. Real estate is what we do. And families are why we do it. Game of the Week is brought to you by Whitehead Hancock. Whitehead Hancock Plumbing has been serving Frankfurt families for more than 100 years. You can trust Whitehead Hancock for all your plumbing, heating, cooling, and septic needs. Call them today at 502-227-2213 for 24-hour emergency service or visit their website at whiteheadhancock.com. Today, we customize everything. Yeah. So why not customize your video choices with NextFan Stream, the new video streaming app from FPB. Just install NextFan Stream on your smart TV, mobile, and streaming devices. Then watch with features like Restart and Replay TV, plus Cloud DVR to record cable and local channels. Powered by fast, reliable FPB internet and Wi-Fi. Customize your video. Call or visit FPB online to sign up. 
Tune in to Around 10, Frankfurt's very own morning show. We cover all the happenings in the capital city every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. Live on Cable 10, Facebook, and YouTube. Remember, if it happens around town, it's on Around 10. Welcome back, and all the stats favor Great Crossing, not just on the scoreboard, but on the sheet. They not only dunk, they can shoot threes, too. How about Vince Dawson the third, right off the opening tap, then he dishes to Gage Richardson. And another, and another. Hills answers using the rim, Cole McDonald. Kick to the corner to Janias Burrell. Richardson spot up. Stone beats the buzzer to give us the score we have right now, 61 to 29. First half stats, how's this grab you? 71% from the field for Great Crossing, zero turnovers. Vince Dawson, 20 points. Jeremiah Godfrey, 10. Malachi Marino, 10. Janias Burrell, 9. Gage Richardson, 6. Christian Martin, 4. LJ Holman, 2. For Western Hills, Javion Campbell, 11. Kalen Higgins with seven, Austin Stone with six, Cole McDonald with three, and Cameron Flynn with two. The Wolverines have turned it over 13 times. They are 12 for 29, 41.4%. Rebounds are even, 15 apiece. Part of that's because Great Crossing's not missing any shots. On the steals, three from Richardson is the lead in that category. Five assists from Dawson as well. And if you're on the triple-double watch for Marino, he probably won't play long enough to get there. But five rebounds, three blocks. Well, and you, as you're going through those numbers, I think it, it's a testament to Mr. Dawson that how I was saying just before we went to break about it's been kind of a quiet night for him. 
<laughs> he's got 20 points he's in this one. He's 9 for 11 I mean, with 20 points and 5 assists. That tells you how good he is and how efficient that he is when he's not even, you know, really getting your attention. And he, all he's done is score a cool 20 piece in the first half. And great crossing will start with the ball. Godfrey drives the baseline. And Dawson will clean up, dropping it home. 34 point lead. They'll pressure. Stone will dribble through it and drive, and Marino will swat it off the backboard. Godfrey, the outlet, intercepted. There's your first turnover of the night. <laughs> Ruin that stat. The immaculate game goes by the boards. Campbell stays with it and earns the trip to the foul line. Dawson picks up the second foul. Campbell's got such strong hands. It's rare that once he gets a paw on it that you're going to tear it away from him. Bank shot from Campbell. He'll have another at the they line. They usually stay open a little later on a Friday, don't they? I don't know. How, how long is Expre Credit Union open on Friday? Two for Campbell, 63-31. Burrell can't get it to fall after they break the press. Campbell rebounds. Again, Coach Page putting Godfrey out top. The anticipation gets Richardson a steal. Burrell to Dawson. Rare mid-range miss for Trey, but great crossing corrals it. Godfrey gets a reset. And he'll get a dunk. No, he'll get a hook. He'll get a putback. He'll get a third chance, and he'll tip it in. Godfrey must be going for a double-double, trying to get those rebound numbers up. It was an adventure on that trip. The great crossing cashed in. Six and a half minutes to play third quarter. 34 points the margin again. Stone, floater, no good. Burrell runs it the other way. He'll take it to the hole. And we have a running clock for the final 14 minutes and 10 seconds. When Burrell gets a step around you, he is really good at finishing all the way to the rim. Campbell. That one blocked as Morris got it thrown back at him by Richardson. And Morris should have given a little pump fake, then could have got a clean look. Richardson was not having that. Sends it into the crowd in a short range miss. And a nice put back by McDonald. Put a little English on it. Quickly, the Warhawks go the other way. Burrell leaves it short, but guess who? Vince Dawson the third on the second opportunity. Probably one of the lower percentage shots that Great Crossing's put up tonight. That 18 footer from Burrell, but when you got guys like Dawson crashing the glass, it usually works out in your favor anyway. It's one thing that Coach Page will harp on, and even though it's easier said than done in a game like this, you don't want to get sloppy and don't want to do things that you wouldn't normally do and develop any bad habits going into next week. Moreno with another offensive rebound and finish. Yeah, Great Crossing obviously has their sights set on bigger prizes than just this 41st District Championship, although this is step one. But you're right, you got to stay sharp, stay on top of your game going forward. Godfrey can't finish that one. McDonald with the rebound. No matter how well you do in the regular season, you got to win nine or at least eight. You don't technically have to win a district final to be a state champion, but it sure helps. Marino bounces it ahead to Burrell. The lead is 40. But you want to go 9-0 and in the postseason. This will make Great Crossing 2-0. and Long three misses. Dawson chases down the rebound.
Dawson will take a three and bury it. That's an improved aspect of his game and one that's really taken him to the next level. Quite literally. It'll be interesting to see after this postseason what opportunities might arise as a lot of eyes will be on Vince Dawson III next week and he hopes a couple of weeks down the road. Campbell with a nice move to put it back with Marino in his face. So, Cal, with the, the COVID year stuff, you know, that we're starting to get to the tail end of, as Godfrey with the bucket, it's, you know, there's still a lot of confusion about who's got extra years of eligibility and who's going to take it and who won't and things you, like that. You but, had to have filled out the paperwork already. So that, that had to be done when that came into play a couple okay. of years ago. So, so what what are we looking at going forward in terms of you know who's gonna be back on this great crossing? Everybody team next year? is eligible to be back next year, steal by Richardson, except for Godfrey and Warren. I have been I don't know about Christian Martin. He comes off the bench. He he technically filled out that paperwork. He's listed as a junior. Dawson is eligible. He's a COVID junior. Burrell is a COVID junior. Marino is a true junior, if you want to use that term as wholesale substitutions now. We see Brady Oren, Christian Martin, among others. Trevante Cooper, Jalen Warren, LJ Holm. So the majority of this team could return next year as Martin has six points now after that short jumper. So I assume that it's conceivable that a guy like Vince Dawson could, if he wanted to get some summer work in and go ahead and reclassify if if he desired. Yeah, he, the reclassification's already been done. He, he is listed on the roster as a junior, as is Burrell. So if they want to come back, it's 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 a done deal. Well, I was saying, like, if he wanted to go. Oh, you know, if, if he, he got, wanted to, yeah. yeah. Yeah, depending on, it's it's conceivable. And there's two trains of thought. If you don't win it this year, then you're hungry to, to win it next year. If you do win it this year, do you want to run it back? Or do you say, let's go out on top? I mean, there's all kinds of trains of thought. I got a feeling we'll see most of these guys next season. In Dawson's case, it may benefit him college-wise, opportunity-wise. Well, I'll, I'll be from uh, everybody else in the 41st district, 11th region and beyond. <laughs> You're going to encourage The thought of another to... year of Vince Dawson scares the life out of everybody. McDonald on the miss, Martin on the rebound, Martin up ahead, Holman drops it to Warren. Martin's going to get a wide open three, short. Rebound, T2 Cooper tried to stuff it inside to Orem and threw it away. At least we don't have to worry about the clock stopping. It just runs continuously now. So knock on wood, we won't have that issue. Well, that we was look the at problem Steve the other Page, night was that it was stopping when it wasn't yeah, supposed to. That is also true. At least there were reasons for it to be stopping during the game at that point. Tonight, Western Hills just trying to get to the end. Get ready for Tuesday night when they will go on the road and face... Let's see, more than likely, could be Lexington Catholic, could be the 42nd District Champion, which would be Douglas or Bryan Station, or the 44th District Champion, which would be either Madison Central or Madison Southern. Southern is the best regular season team from down that way. Is Javion Campbell comes out, at least for the moment. Rebound off the missed free throw to Holman. Holman takes it the distance. Can't get it to fall. Stone rebound. Final seconds, third quarter. Steal by Cooper. Up ahead to Warren. Gives it back to Cooper for the finish. Nice, nice unselfish play. Nice two on O oh or two on one or whatever you want to call it there. He figured Cooper deserved it after making the defensive play. Gets the rebound there as well. Buzzer sounds on the third quarter. Cooper narrowly missed that one from 60 feet. Your score with eight minutes to go. Great Crossing 82, Western Hills 38. Back after this. David Toll's Auto Pro customers can't go anywhere without him.
no matter where life takes you, the David Tolls Auto Pro nationwide warranty is by your side. my friend Logan's soccer coach. Why'd you wave at her? Because she's also our Kentucky Farm Bureau insurance agent. She's the one that helped us get our house fixed after that big storm last year. Well, that explains the name of their team. Which is? The Storm. <laughs> Good one. Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance. Big on commitment. Back at Great Crossing High School where the Warhawks are eight minutes away for being three-time consecutive 41st district champions. They lead Western Hills by 44. The starters are done for the night, done for the week. They will host a game Tuesday night against a district runner-up from the 42nd, 43rd, or 44th. The draw is tomorrow. The rest of the tournament will be played at Paul Lawrence Dunbar as EKU is occupied with college games, and it's going to be a tight squeeze for that 11th region semifinals and finals. There's a deep three from Stone. That's his third from downtown tonight, and a couple of them have been from real deep. One of them a buzzer beater. Cooper, yes. T2's having a nice appearance here to close out the tournament. Can you uh, explain the T2? I think his dad is T1. I think he's like junior. Gotcha. So. He's not the Terminator or anything. <laughs> Rebound, Orem. I like the name Travanti Cooper. It kind of rolls off the tongue when you're an announcer, but they do call him T2 almost exclusively. Christian Martin, I predicted he was going to get to double digits, and he just may. That's eight. He's got a chance to add another. Campbell returns to action as the clock continues to roll. Yeah, we don't typically you know, expect a whole lot of production out of the great crossing bench, and that's just because their starting five are so prolific. But yeah, Martin has shown himself to be a worthy addition. Orham holding on to Campbell. Sometimes that's the best course of action. Good test for Brady Orham to go up against one of the toughest competitors in the district and region. Yeah, we were talking the other night about how Orham is kind of the heir apparent to the center position for this great crossing team. And uh, I'll say earlier uh, when they were warming up, I was down on the court and I was right next to Orham. Warren lays it up and in. He does not look like an eighth grader when you're right next yeah, to him. Yeah, he's a, he's a big guy. He's a lot, <laughs> you know, bigger than I expected. There's the nice drive and lay in by Warren to make it 89-41. Jamari Mason has checked into the game, as has Ryan Payne. The Warhawks have now played everybody. Question is, will they get to 100 in both games of the tournament? And 106 the other night. They're 11 away from the century mark here. That three is off the mark from Payne. Will Nguyen in the game. For Western Hills. We're seeing some fresh faces from both sides. That's an attempted three from Mason that's short. Yeah, both squads have gone deep, maybe as deep as possible in this one. And I like to see it when you got a game like this. It's it's cool for guys that have, you know, been with the team. They're putting in the hard work too. Don't get a lot of playing time, but to get to a chance to Get, get, get some significant run in a district championship game. That's going to be a cool thing. Speaking of deep, Stone fired another three. Hill's got the dead ball rebound. McConnell even deeper. Why not? Swish. Well, sometimes when the game's like this, the, the pressure just slides right off your shoulders. You can relax and let it fly. Jordan Kuntz 
now in the game. Payne, drive, floater, no. Coots put back. 91-44, 4.14 to play. McDonald, tough angle, no. Orem pulls it down. Up ahead to Holman. Kicks it out for a three that's short again by Mason. Payne tried to grab the rebound, tipped it out of bounds. Klaus. The middle schooler in the game for Hills. Stone sits down. Steel, great crossing. And a dunk for Holman. Freshman, LJ Holman. Double digit scorer in the semifinals. A flex. <laughs> Well, if, if Orem is the heir apparent to come in behind Marino, would think, you say that Holman is the next Vince Dawson? I, I, I think so. He's a little closer to Burrell's height right now, but he's got the hops, and he's got the well-rounded game to be just that. Three-pointer is off the mark. Orem grabs the board. We have another clock issue, don't we? Uh, oh, it's an I air thought, horn. It's yeah. an air horn issue. I heard that go off, and I wondered, like, eh, are they going to let no that fly? No noisemakers. Thank you. Noisemakers and laser pointers. I don't like either one of those. Jordan Kuntz. Surveying the scene, he will drive and drop to Cooper. Inside Orem, Orem post up, tough shot, no good. Payne with the board. Got it knocked out of his hands, lost it, they'll say. It'll go to the Wolverines. Connor Ham for Western Hills. Junior. Not a ton of seniors, at least healthy ones, on this Western Hills roster. Javion Campbell, a junior, of course, the high demand for his football services. We'll see what happens with his senior basketball season. Jaden Samuels, and uh, he may be the last guy off the Western Hills bench. Cooper for three, no. Payne fighting, gets the rebound, gets Cooper a second chance. And he says hi to the bench, 96-44. Well, the Wolverine uh, zone has been providing some three-point opportunities. Great crossing hadn't been able to knock many of them down, but. That one gets him within a shot of hitting the century mark. They are four away with a minute to play. Mason to Cooper. Cooper step back three. Yes, sir. Western Hills isn't any, any <laughs> hurried in by the ball, and the clock is this, not running, you noticed. This looks like soccer when you, uh, you know, uh, take your time on the throw in. Nobody wants to see that 100 if they're wearing black and green. Oh, there's a nice elbow jumper that's going to give Great Crossing a chance. They're going to walk it across, and I don't know if Steve Page in a show of sportsmanship is going to say, nope, let's is. just hold it. Two very different urgings on the Great Crossing bench. The players and the coaches are giving two different directions. Looks like Great Crossing is going to do the right thing as time ticks away. Your final score, three-time champions, Great Crossing 99, Western Hills 46. Back in a moment with the play and player of the game. Stay with us. 
The Game of the Week Play of the Game is brought to you by Expre Credit Union. Expre Credit Union wishes all our local teams a great season. Show your local spirit with a spirited debit card featuring your school colors and mascot. Open an Expre spirited account today and let the rivalry continue. Federally insured by NCUA. Expre Credit Union wishes all our local teams a great season. Score $5 for the high school of your choice simply by opening a spirited account featuring your school colors and mascot on your debit card. Show your support, Flyers, Panthers, or Wolverines, who will raise the most. Go to Xpree.org today. Choose wisely, Western Hills, Franklin County, Frankfurt High. Let the rivalry continue, federally insured by the NCUA. Back at Great Crossing High School where the Warhawks have defended their title with authority, 99 to 46, our Expre Credit Union play of the game. I'm guessing it's probably a dunk. Yeah, and it's not gonna surprise me if it's this one right here. Michael Marino went up the long the arm, right reached back to get it. Grab it and throw it down. Malachi Marino, the Expre Credit Union player of the game, and how about your Chick-fil-A of Georgetown player of the game for the second time this week, Trey Dawson. Well, he's a guy that has filled it up throughout this tournament, and we would expect more of that as the postseason goes on. But he's just, uh, you know, maybe the most all-around skilled player in the region, uh, the way that he can fill it up from deep and get to the rim and finish. And he was putting it on display tonight from all levels of the court. And they'll put on the district champion t-shirts. Western Hills, a great win the other night to get to the 11th region tournament and put the cherry on the Sunday for their season. They just fell shy against a, a historically great high school basketball team tonight. Any final thoughts, Jason? Well, we saw what Great Crossing is. It's, it's been a good opportunity for maybe some folks that haven't got to see them throughout the season uh, to see just, you know, what they're able, the product they can put on the court. And it's something that's fun to watch. And uh, certainly all eyes will be on them moving forward as they have sights set on a state title. So uh, we'll see what happens from here. On behalf of Jason Hyatt and all the great folks at Cable 10 that have made this possible, I'm Cal Oaks. I've enjoyed this week tremendously. Hope you've enjoyed the tournament as well. Congratulations to Great Crossing and Western Hills as they move on to the 11th Region Tournament. Good night, everybody.